In this video, I will uh, start to solve the uh, second order linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients. Um, we'll continue this in uh, subsequent videos. Um, the general equation uh, with x a function of time, x dot is dx dt, x double dot is d squared x dt squared. The general equation is ax double dot plus bx dot plus cx equals zero. Um, a, b, and c are constants. And um, because we want this to be a second order equation, we can specify that a is not equal to zero here. So they can be positive or negative constants. B and C can be zero, but A should not be equal to zero. Okay. Um, so we're going to solve this equation by trying to find two uh, what we call independent solutions to this equation. Um, and then uh, using the principle of superposition, we're going to form a linear combination of those two independent solutions to construct a general solution. The general solution will have two free constants, C1 and C2, and we'll use the initial conditions on x and on x dot in order to specify those two free constants. Okay, so how do we solve this uh, second order equation? Well, the method we use is essentially guessing the form of the solution, okay? Um, the form of the solution means that we're guessing uh, a solution, but uh, a solution that still has some free parameter associated with it in order to be able to uh, come up with an equation to determine that free parameter. So that, form, that type of guess is called an ansatz. So we want to take an ansatz uh, for x. So uh, we want to try an ansatz, it's a German word, for x. Okay. And what should we take? So we should try x of t of some form. Okay. Now, um, the idea of the ansatz is to convert the uh, differential equation, which is a time-dependent equation, equation for the function x of t, into an algebraic equation for the free parameter of the ansatz. Okay. Now, the form of this equation should, should uh, suggest what the ansatz should be. And uh, we know that the derivative of an exponential function is an exponential function. So it's possible that if we try uh, exponential function for our ansatz, we can get the exponential function to cancel out of the equation to end up with an algebraic equation. So um, the exponential function uh, can have a free parameter associated with it. So for our ansatz, we can take an exponential function with a free parameter, which is a constant r times t. So r is a constant parameter. Okay? Uh, so we can try that as our ansatz. Now the advantage of this ansatz is that we'll see that the exponential function will cancel. So x dot, right, if we know how to take the derivative of an exponential function, gives us back the exponential function times the derivative of the exponent with respect to time, which is r. r is a constant. So we have an r times e to the rt. The second derivative repeats this process. So we have an r squared times e to the rt. And we substitute it into our differential equation. So we have an a times x double dot r squared e to the rt plus a b times x dot r e to the rt plus a c times x 
e to the rt equals zero. Okay. And now we've been we're rewarded by our choice of ansatz. The e to the rt cancels. So e to the rt, e to the rt, e to the rt. Right. So we're left with an algebraic equation for r. A r squared plus b r plus c equals zero, which is the well-known uh, quadratic equation. Right. <coughs> okay, so our parameter r then is uh, unknown, and we can solve the quadratic equation in the standard way. So r two roots plus or minus equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c over two a. Okay. So there are two roots uh, in general of uh, for R. So that means we found in general two solutions for X, right? But uh, it's more complicated than that because uh, the roots of a quadratic equation can be of three types, right? So then there are three cases. that need to be considered here, right? So the first case is when b squared minus 4ac is positive, right? Then we see that there are two, um, two real uh, distinct solutions for r, r plus and minus. So in this case, there are two distinct real roots um, and then uh, we can just apply the principle of superposition directly so that um, we d discovered uh, two solutions e to the r plus t e to the r minus t and we can write x of t as a linear superposition of those two solutions, c1 times e to the r plus t plus c2 times e to the r minus t. That case is the most straightforward case. Okay. Uh, the second case is when b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, negative. Then there are two distinct right? Complex conjugate roots. Right? So b squared minus 4ac is negative, so it's the square root of a negative number, which becomes i times the square root of the absolute value of that number. So we end up with a real part plus or minus i times a uh, imaginary part. We have two uh, distinct complex conjugate roots. So then when we find our solution e to the rt, r is complex, so we have to deal with complex exponentials in this solution. And then we form a linear superposition of those two complex exponentials. And uh, the final result is supposed to be real because the solution to this equation with real initial conditions has to be real. So that will impose some requirement on the coefficients c1 and c2 and we'll be able to determine what the real solution looks like starting with the um, complex exponentials. So that will be a little bit more complicated than case one. And then finally, the third case that we'll need to consider is when b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Um, in this case, we only have one uh, real root. Okay which is given by minus b over 2a. 
So that means we've only found one solution, e to the rt. There's only one real root. Um, that's a problem because we have two initial conditions to satisfy, x at t naught and x dot of t naught. We need two free constants to satisfy those two initial conditions. But in the case of one real root, we only have one free constant. Okay. So what went wrong? Well, what went wrong is that our ansatz uh, says that our, we're looking only for solutions of the form e to the rt. And if there's a solution which is of a different form than this, our ansatz will not find it. So in fact, when, the K, when b squared minus 4ac equals 0, what we will find is that in addition to a solution of the form e to the rt, there is a solution of another form. Okay. Uh, that cannot be found by this ansatz. So the task for case 3 is to determine that second solution of a different form. So uh, the next videos in this uh, series, this is part 1, to solve this differential equation, we'll deal with the uh, three cases when we have uh, two distinct real roots, two complex conjugate roots, and only one real root.